I had somebody casually admit to me this morning that they'd tried to research on their own how betroidal minerals form. They admitted to me that the entire ordeal had left them feeling a little bit stupid, largely because all of the websites that tried to convey this information had a vocabulary of cryptic language that left the reader outwardly perplexed. I've therefore created this video and written it in such a way that I assume a child could understand. So let's give this a go. If you find yourself being attracted to colourful rocks with bumpy surfaces, you're probably in love with betroidal minerals. They are like colourful balls that are covered in tiny bumps, almost like bubbles all stuck together. In fact, the word betroidal even means grape-like. But how do these rocks form? Well, it all starts with a tiny point called a nucleus. Just like how a tiny seed can grow into a big tree, a nucleus can grow into a big betroidal mineral. The mineral starts growing by adding more and more material to the nucleus, kind of like building a tower. As the mineral grows, it tries to expand in every direction, which makes it round like a ball. But because it grows unevenly, little bumps start to form all over its surface. These bumps are what give betroidal minerals their unique appearance. The colour and pattern of betroidal minerals depends heavily on what minerals are used to make them and how they were formed. Some can be really colourful and bright, while others might be more muted and earthly. Betroidal minerals can be found in many different places around the world, and various people love collecting them because of how they look and feel. They are really interesting to look at and can teach us a great deal about how rocks and minerals form. So, if ever you see a colourful rock with a bumpy surface, whether that be betroidal hematite, malachite, or the famous grape agate from Indonesia, you are looking at a wonderful example of how beautiful, incredible, and complex Mother Nature is.